In performances, maybe the humor peeks through in, in little ways as Winston Churchill, as Herman Mankiewicz, uh, as a victim of Hannibal Lecter. And, but here, the danger is what sneaks through. We love Jackson, but there's a moment when he uh, has purloined a, a knife from a, from a delicatessen. A and we yeah. see how dangerous he can be. What's that like, that kind of, that kind of reversal in some ways of what, what we kind of are normally kind of expecting from characters? Well, well Jackson, um, he would give, he wants, outwardly, he gives the impression that he doesn't care very much. He's unkempt and he uses it to play a game yeah. and, uh, and it's a defense mechanism and all of, all of that. Yeah. But he sits there with his socks, holes in his socks and his stinky, his stinky feet up on a desk and gives, he does give the impression that he, he doesn't care. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would say he cares a lot more than most. And um, you, you, get, you get clues of Jackson as the books progress. I think there's nine books now. I think he's written another since we started. And you do get clues in the books. But if you went to Mick and you said, Mick Heron, and you said, um, what, what, you know, I've asked him questions about Jackson Lamb, he'll say, um, well, if it isn't in the book and it isn't on the page, then I don't know. Mm. I haven't thought beyond that. Yeah. But we know that he was an incredibly good agent mm -hmm. at one time. And as, as, as the series goes on or the series of books go on, there are little clues that, that, you, that you gather, yeah. like little breadcrumbs, mm -hmm. to his background and who he is and what may, maybe what he went through yeah. as an agent. So he can really, he, he can, in the book he's described, he's a little heavier than me in the book. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm, look at that body. And God, <laughs> just, have you ever seen a sexier man wash his armpits? <laughs> Someone described me as a garlic bulb that had learned to walk, <laughs> which, I, which I think is a pretty good description, isn't it, really? Um, and so he is not physically particularly agile, but when he moves, he moves in the book, he describes him as moving surprisingly quickly for his size. So... Um, He's what with as an agent in Berlin and, uh, and the various people that he's encountered over the o over the years. You know, um, procuring a yeah. a kebab, yeah. a, a knife, yeah. and that yeah. that's all part of yeah. the, the world that he is that he's he's been living in. Right, right. It's like second nature to him now at a certain yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's instinct. Yeah. Another thing that I love about about your performance is that um, Jackson is is constantly consuming things, uh, whether it's cigarettes or alcohol, a bag of chips, uh, some lamps of Lockie or whatever. You know, it's always got. And then it, of course, is going out uh, in belches, in flagellants, and all sorts of things. Yeah. The one thing that that that's the opposite of that, though, is the spycraft. When intel goes into his brain, it never leaves, does it? It's always there, and that's. I think I love that aspect to him that. He can call up things that he knows from his years of, of being a spy master um, at, a, at a moment's notice. It's always inside of him, isn't it? I, yeah, I think there's uh, similarities between him and, and, and George Smiley. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. that they, that they, I, I describe George as a sort of owl. You know, those big eyes, those big glasses, and that sort of, and he moves in a very slow way, but taking sort of everything in. I mean, Jackson's very much very much out of that mould. Um, uh, smartest man in the room. Yeah, yeah. And even though he'll, he'll lead you along yeah. to think that he, that he isn't. But yeah. then again, that's the game and that's, that's, that's the spy craft. Yeah, right. Much of what you see, you know, he does his thinking when he's, he, he, you think he's dozing and sleeping at the desk, yeah, yeah. but he's marinating that's where the work yeah. sort of takes place. And of course, you know, to the slow horses, he's the old man's up there right. 
dozing on the sofa. <laughs> but he's actually, I think, sometimes he is dozing. <laughs> and sometimes he's hung over. And, right. but, but he is, when he, it's like, um, it's like a, a battery or something that's on, um, it's like on charge. Yeah, or a sleep mode, yeah. And a sleep mode. Yeah. But it's but the mind is is working. Yeah, I yeah. Love it. yeah. Even in the doctor's office, there he's not just sleeping on that couch. He's assessing everybody in the room. Yeah, because then he yeah. comes back and he says there was a guy over there in the corner. Right. right yeah. Yeah. I love that. The and and Lamb, of course, also is brought into focus by his dealings with his team and uh, at Slough House. And I just want to call out that amazing ensemble because this is a phenomenal ensemble. Please, a round of applause for Jack Loudon, Saskia Reeves, <laughs> Roslyn Elazar, Christopher Chung, Cardiff Kerwin, Amy Fionn Edwards, the amazing Kristen Scott Thomas, uh, Sophia Canato. They're all fantastic. Um, Gary, I want to ask you about, about in terms of portraying Lamb and, and, and the way he deals with everyone on the team, does... Do you kind of see him, and I and you see them a little bit with with Saskia Reeves' character with with uh, with Santa, that that he deals with them all a little bit differently. And I'm wondering if approaching it as an actor, like you kind of you turn the diamond a little bit more, a little differently, so that each interaction he has with each member of his team reveals a little bit more about him, or is certainly a little different than the others, right? That's very much in the writing. Mm. That is very much in the in the the. Mick, Her Mick Heron's universe. Um, you know, people have said to me, have, have asked me, they said, oh, Jackson Lamb, you know, and how did you come up with it? And how do you, how, you know, how did you create it? I, it's all out of the imagination of Mick. He created the characters and the world. It's, it's so, the, the people in this are so beautifully drawn. The voices, the individual voices of the characters are so beautifully drawn, and more so in the books because, you know, we have six hours to tell it, which is which is better than a movie, which a two-hour window. But even with six hours, there is, you know, you you still feel the pressure to to the denouement. You know, you've got to get to to the you've got to wrap up the plot, the the, the narrative, and so. A uh, character is sa some of the character is sacrificed, but w specifically what you're talking about is on the page how I react to each character. Now, I I have to say I I can't speak to other people who have been in a long series or long form or and how they all get on. I'm sure that they would sit here and if you ask them. They would say, "Oh, everybody's wonderful," and I, <laughs> "Oh, I love him." You know what I mean? And and they and they they might not mean it. You know what I mean? I have to honestly and genuinely can say that um, uh, it is absolutely a joy to go in and work with these people. We have uh, Lucy Sibic, who does my makeup and hair. She was on Darkest Hour with me. We got Danny, the DP. We have Vincent, who's the who's the operator. We have Guy, who does the costumes, and Georgina. And all these people come back again and again and again, and the cast are the most adorable bunch of people that you could ever really spend time around. So, I don't know. Maybe I was <clears throat> saying earlier. Did anyone here see the Vikings, the series? Yeah. Have you right? Can you imagine <clears throat> season four and they say, oh, we're going to do season five. You've got mud, you've got freezing cold, you've got tattoos, you're covered in blood, you're on the ice, you're in that water. I think some of them may have rolled their eyes and gone, oh, fucking hell, I've got to go back and do that. <laughs> oh, shit, we've got to do season five. <laughs> so, you know, they're yeah. kind of wishing for the thing <laughs> to, to, to end. <laughs> And uh, so I watch it and go, oh, my, I've got kudos to you guys, you know. Um, when they say we're doing another Slow Horses, I go, oh, f oh God, we're going to go see everyone. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get to see everyone again. Yeah. You know, Chris Chung, who plays Ho, mm -hmm. he's a darling guy. And, and um, uh, Christian I worked with before. And, 
uh, Jack Loudon is just such a like, super guy. Mm -hmm. And I know it sounds like it's gushy, but it really is. I, I love these guys. Yeah. And we're very, very lucky that we've got producers who are all on the same page. They don't bicker. There's no real arguments. Mm -hmm. There's no, we all get on. Yeah. So it really is a joy to, um, to come in. And I was looking for a part. I've always admired long form TV. Mm -hmm a big fan of it, and I would watch it sometimes with envy because I would think, oh, it must be really, real. I'd really like a chance to come to revisit a character mm -hmm. and come back on, over, over a long, I've done it with Potter a bit mm -hmm. and Batman, but it's but not the same. And I was looking for, <clears throat> I was looking for something that was maybe the spy genre, because I, I enjoy, I enjoyed the, the tinker experience so much. I was looking for something where I could really have my own accent. I, I mean, I put a sort of a top, a bit of spin on it, but it's mainly my accent. Where I'm in my own clothes or one costume and I don't have loads of costume changes. <laughs> um, I don't want a lot of makeup. I don't want to sit in the chair for hours. So these were all the boxes. <laughs> that you had to tick, you know what I mean? And then, and then the slow horses comes in and you go, I mean, you know, like someone's up there looking after you. Right, right, right. <laughs> so it kind of came in and just fell from the sky. Yeah. And it, and it, it, and it, it did, it literally ticked all the, all the boxes. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a really great, been a great experience. Yeah. And ticks them all so well. It's it's funny. It's a thriller. It's explosive at lots of moments. It's humane and about humanity and about friends and 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 enemies. And it's about yeah. uh, self-deprecating humor and all of that stuff. And this yeah. one feels more. Um, this this season feels more personal because it's one of ours. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so there's a, um, a an energy and a motivation yeah. to resolve this yeah. whatever you know whatever it is or whatever they're up to right, right. Um, and uh, yeah it's good I feel I feel I feel very lucky yeah. you know yeah. I'm 65 yeah. and to I'm, I'm thrilled to be working to be honest with you I mean it's always nice and it to be in a gig you know to have a gig and then to do something as nice as this you know I feel very very privileged very lucky to be doing it yeah yeah and you mentioned uh ho by the way i have seen the rest of this season it's phenomenal um as you guys move along in this season there's a terrific uh car ride that uh, that ho and jackson have that's really wonderful uh and really bonds those two characters in a fun way we've got a room full of actors here gary so i want to kind of talk a little bit about process a little bit you've mentioned uh in an interview a couple of years ago about phone acting and how important that is and and you can really tell when somebody's doing it well or not well and this is a a series obviously where there's there's sort of variations on that especially in spycraft stuff people are there's there's information that's being given to the audience via people on on phones I can't talk about how important that is because it really is sort of a, a beautiful, subtle art, isn't it? The the art of phone acting, as it were, or things like that. Um, yeah, I've always there's certain things that I have a pet peeves with things like the pouring of coffee or tea or a drink. Pour the coffee and the tea, and it takes the time it takes. Yeah, in season two. I eat noodles, mm -hmm. you, you know, and Jackson is an eater. Mm -hmm. You know, now I ate 18 bowls of noodles <laughs> that day. And then, and then they said, great, okay, we're gonna break for lunch. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm okay, <laughs> I'm all right. Uh, but uh, I, th it's that thing of when people push their food around and they're in an eating scene. And they're not eating. Right. It, now I know you can't always have a mouthful of whatever, and you're doing dialogue. But it it really irks me when I see that. It's like eat the meal, pour the tea, right. pour the coffee, and and um, and and yeah. So phone acting is quite, a, as you say, it's quite delicate art. Phone acting because you're not on the line with the person, 
occasionally you'll get you'll get a director. Um, I mean, Air Force One. I came in for Glenn Close. She wanted me at the other end of the phone, and I was happy to come in and and I was off in a room somewhere doing it. But most, more often than not, you have the script supervisor or the first AD reading the, 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 the phone call. Yeah. So you're not even hearing any of the lines in the phone. The best, if you wanna, if you wanna see the Oscar winning phone acting, <laughs> like the gold jer the, the yellow jersey, green jacket <laughs> of phone acting, it's seven minutes long and it's in All the President's Men. And it's Robert Redford. And it is no cut, just a very, very slow push in on him over about seven minutes. And it is the, it is, it's the world, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's important because you have to buy that. You have to, you have to uh, really believe that that character is on the phone. If you just think that he's just giving exposition, it's a, you know, it's it's you got to, it's fifty percent of its loss. You've got to be able to believe. Yeah, that. yeah. And, and plus the fact, you know, I let's I'd be here yeah. on the phone, mm -hmm. and you would be hearing it through the phone, mm -hmm. but you would be reading it off, right. sitting the dialogue sitting over in the corner. So it's it's um, it's one of the odd things mm -hmm. about. Um, about film acting, well, even stage acting, you probably, if you had a phone call, you probably wouldn't, you wouldn't have the person at the end of the phone, but there are these things you're asked to do sometimes. Um, have you noticed that, that you forget how to walk through a door? <laughs> <laughs> like, you're, like everything, you, like getting out of a car. I do it all the time. <laughs> I walk through doors and open doors all the time. And then suddenly walking through a door and, and it doesn't feel, it's the, it's the, it's the weirdest thing. So you're asked to do some, some things and, um, and I've done enough green screen as well where you're standing and you're looking at, you know, you're looking at a cross, a bit of gaffer tape and it's a spaceship landing <laughs> or a, a dementor, right. you know. <laughs> it's the way, it's, yeah. yeah. That's, and, and you have to find a way, I think, as an actor. Um, it's, it's, someone once asked me, they said, how do you remember all those lines? Which is a question that you sometimes get. Um, and I, I, uh, I, I would, uh, initially it was, I, I would, brush it off, you know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> I don't know, well, it's a silly question, right, yeah. you, you know. Yeah. But then I actually gave it some thought once, and I thought, how do I remember all those lines? It's by forgetting everything else. Mm. You are focused in the moment, mm. yeah. and um, as a young actor, I was very distracted. I used to get very distracted by the noise on the set. And I remember the lovely Nick Rogue said to me, you know, you got to learn to block, you got to learn to block that out. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's too, you know, it's too distracting. You got to learn to block it out yeah. and not, and not hear it. Yeah. So it's, um, it's as much to do, I suppose in a way, phone acting and this is as much to do with concentration mm. as anything. Because you've really got to sort of be in both spaces at at once, hearing their conversation and and readying your your response. Yeah. yeah, I mean, in the first episode, I think doesn't River comes in and then I put on my shirt and my watch and my tie mm -hmm. and my jacket and the and the coat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's harder mm. than sitting there and doing a monologue. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. it's 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 the everyday thing. I put clothes on all the time. I take them off, you know, and then you've got to put them on in order with the dialogue to get to that moment where you've got the coat on mm -hmm. as a button yeah. and, you, and you walk. Right. And, that, and so you are putting the clothes on. You're hopefully by then the dialogue is happening yeah. without you even really thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So you're not particularly focused on what you're saying. The text is in you, mm -hmm. but you're, you're putting the clothes on and doing the dialogue, but you know somewhere 
you've got to hit that mark and have your coat on by then. Yeah, yeah. And that's that, that's that thing when, um, you know, people say, oh, I lose myself in the role. And they say, not me, but, but people say, oh, man, <laughs> you know, oh, man, I'm just so in the role. I'm just, I, and I think th there's a lot of BS talked about it. If you were so the character, you would be in an institution. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah? Yeah. You can. Yeah. And the other thing is, is that I was so lost in the moment. Yeah, there are moments when you're in the groove, in the zone, yeah. and it's cooking. But what do you do if you're in a play and you're in a comedy? You have to be in the scene and aware that so you have a laugh line. Wait for the laugh, wait for the laugh, wait. Then you deliver your next line. If you were so lost in the whole reality of it, you would, you would talk over all the laughs. Right, right. You have to have part of you that is here going, which is technique or whatever it is, but you have to have that conscious part of you going, I'm in this and I'm trying to make it as real and as believable as possible. But I'm in a comedy and I'm on stage and there's an audience. Yeah. And I have a laugh and I have to wait. And it's the same really with, I think it's, I think it's, it's the same with film acting. You know, you, you, there's got to be part of you because it's technical. Right. And it's not all about you. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. the, that's the other thing when people say, oh, I can't. I can't, my character wouldn't, my character wouldn't do that. Well, you know, well, if you don't do that, I remember someone working with Martin Scorsese years ago and they was, they were, it was dialogue, tracking along the street and they were walking along the street and then the actor said, and once I get here, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, and then I could do this and I could do that and the thing and Marty said, yeah, it's great, you could do that, but it won't be on, it won't be in the movie because the track stops here. <laughs> right. so, yeah, do it. Right, right, right. But if you want. Right. But, won't you, be in the film, right. but it won't be in the film. <laughs> um, so you have to be, that's the, that's the trick, I think, that when musicians play, a really good musician, I think, who's been doing it a long time, you have to have faith that all the hours of practice are in the hands. If you're playing the guitar or a piano, you just got to trust that all the work that you've done is, is in the hands. And it's the same, I think, with, with, with acting. You've, you've, you've just got to you've let go and trust that it's all there so that then you can manage the crazy technical things that you that 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 you're asked to do i mean i've never done i've done a couple of love scenes in my time I, well they're kind of love scenes um but how it really is you know you've got you're you're in a room naked with 18 people looking up your butt you know it's not <laughs> It's not. It's not very nice. You know, it's not. A very, it's not a very nice experience. And I, I really, I admire when I when I see actors who are who 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 do that in movies. Yeah. Um, I really. It's it's a strange thing where you're doing it in a room all, full of all these people yeah, right. <laughs> who are then going. We, we, <laughs> Right. We really need to move on, you right. know. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, I'm going to kind of follow a line, sort of about technique, to wrap up, which is which is about uh, makeup and and hair, or the you know the disguises that can be worn. Um, over the course of 40 years, you have of course done many, but but including your victory in Darkest Hour. But um, I, yes, there's going to be an applause line. Absolutely. <laughs> But uh, going back to Prick of Prayers, you mentioned Nick Rogue, Track 29. You've, there's been, uh, you know, obviously countless films that you have not 
worn a lot of makeup. It, when it's something like Slow Horses, where perhaps it's a little bit of the wardrobe. You've got the the coat that is the same color as his cigarette ash, and the and the stained shirt and everything. That's sort of it, and and obviously a little bit of heft. But is it freeing to not be under so much makeup like that? And I'm also wondering if it, if it's also a challenge. You mentioned you're kind of using your your actual voice a little bit uh, as Jackson. Is there a, is there a kind of a, a double edged sword in some ways? It's both very freeing, but it's also a bit of a hurdle in some ways. Well, I've spent a year of I spent years of disguising myself, and all out of, I mean, some obviously through opportunity, because of some of the parts I played. But I'll always I would always go to that thing of, how can I not look like me, out of insecurity. Mm, interesting. Yeah. You, yeah. you know, I don't. You don't like the way you look. I mean, we all have it in some way or another mm -hmm. and you want to disguise it and you want to or or you know and I'll think about it's not that I sketch but I do think about a character um how um sort of from often from the neck up mm. and I'll and then worry about you know, or it, it's, it's, I tell you what, each one is very different. It can come with an accent mm -hmm. and a music in the accent mm -hmm. that then informs the way that you, it, that informs the face as well. Because if you're playing, if you're playing a character who's, he doesn't move his mouth very much, yeah. you know what I mean? You, you, then, then that's going to, that's going to inform what happens in facially. Um, but I like disguises, mm -hmm. I do, mm -hmm. and I think it really comes from insecurity. You know, I read somewhere years ago that Laurence Olivier was told that he was very, he was very weak here. Mm -hmm. And he spent the entire rest of his career putting putty on his nose wow. and filling in that... that mm -hmm. Th that yeah. spot there, you know what I mean, and and you. Uh, so I think it's it's part it's character, and in, 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 in insecurity, that, um, and when I'm fully disguised, I'm f free, f I, but I don't feel, I feel with very little. I can disappear into lamb mm. using very little. I was terrified of Mank mm -hmm. because Finch has said to me, I said, you don't want, I came up with these ideas and I, I went to the photographs, not that there's a lot of photographs of Mankiewicz, but I went to these photographs and they said, you know, what about this? He's, I can I put on a bit of weight? He's a lot heavier than I am. And he said, sure, sure, it's okay. And I said, you know, and, he, and we went through all of this and he said, you don't get it. He said, I want no veil between you and the audience. I want you to be the most naked you've ever been. And I was terrified for a while because I thought, Shit, I'm gonna re so I'm gonna kind of look like me, and he went, "Yeah, that's the idea." <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think the twenty-five-year-old Gary back then was more insecure and more, more neurotic mm -hmm. than the sixty-five-year-old Gary, mm -hmm. and I've kind of mellowed and. It is what it is, isn't it, now? I mean, after 42 years of doing this, I mean, it is what it is. You know. uh, yeah. Yeah. And well, what it is in Slow Horses is phenomenal and so terrific, and it's such a delight. You anchor that amazing ensemble, and you are so terrific in it. If I could ask everybody just to stay in your seats for just a couple of seconds, Gary has got another event to get to. But I also want to comment that all the new episodes that are coming on Apple TV+, Plus, they are on Wednesdays through December 27th of Slow Horses. Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Oldman and the show is Slow Horses. Thank you very much.